Hey, Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. We always get a couple questions about how to use the diagnostics in MeasureQuick, and I just wanted to show you, you know, how we really intended this to be used. So, when you're looking at a couple different things, there's some there's some vi some visual diagnostics you have as well as integrated diagnostics into the application. Right here, right now, we're on a uh, on a performance screen here, and we can see that we have EER, SEER, total external static pressure, and fan efficacy. And these, from yellow to green, are just simply high efficiency to lower efficiency. So when you're in the yellow zone, you're in the lower efficiency zone. Uh, when you're in the green zone, you're in the higher efficiency zone. And you can see like right now, we're in that mid efficiency range right here. Total external static pressure's got a green, a yellow, and a red. We're in the, we're in the, in the yellow to green range, which means you know, we're, in a, we're in, a, uh, in a decent external static pressure range. And then fan efficacy, we're at 0.33, which also is in a, in a good range. Green is obviously, the farther in the green we are, the better but in that, in that yellow band is totally okay for this type of stuff. Now, when you get into things like uh, capacities here, when you got the red, the yellow, and the green, the green is the area that we should be in. So our total capacity in this case is well into the green here. Uh, sensible capacity is into the green. You can see here it's a sensible latent split over here is into the green range, going between the green and the yellow, and those are just visual indicators of where things should be. Down at the top of the gauge here, you can see that we've got this uh, uh, plot band here, and you can also see that our needle's outside of that, so the head pressure on this is high. Now, if we tap on any one of these, like if I tap right here on my iPad, what you're going to see is, is that it's going to pull up what the current value is, what the design of the center of the glide is, and then what the allowable range is. So in this case here, our current value is 295, we can be between 261 and 285. We're outside of the desired range, so that's why that's showing a high head pressure target. If I just hit the X in the, in the corner here, that'll close that up. Now I can scroll through and look at all my values here. I can see I have a low change in enthalpy. Looks like I have high airflow and I have a low temperature split. And all these different readings here, everything's got a calculated target. So you can see as we're looking here that it, it makes this flag. Now when I tap on that red flag, it's gonna tell me a major potential fault. Now, in this case here, we got return air, air duct leakage suspected. This is a new fault we just added in here, uh, and it's, a, it's an aggregation of a whole bit, a bunch of minor faults. So if you look in the bottom here, it tells you what a black flag is, a caution triangle, a red flag, and a red flag that like you have here, it says there's five different faults that are, that are giving us that indication of return duct leakage. So if I tap on that plus sign, these are all the minor faults that are aggregating in to tell us that that major fault uh, of return air duct leakage is up there. So in this case here, we have the condenser pressure is too high, the estimated airflow is too high, the split's too low. Those are all indications that we have return duct leakage. If I tap on that return duct leakage, you can see here it'll tell me what uh, the low temperature split is an indication of duct leakage and what to do about that or how to test that. So these are, are you know, the basically tells you what the symptoms are, what the, what, what's going to happen if you leave it that way, and then what the repair is in this case. So uh, very, very simple to use. Now, you'll also notice that there's a clear fault on here. So if I go through and I check this and I say, okay, well, there is no return air duct leakage and I hit clear, now it's gonna tell me in this case, my airflow is too high. Because the only thing that's gonna cause that lower temperature split is gonna be either a refrigerant charge issue, uh, a, a duct leakage issue, or too high of a temperature split on there. And MeasureQuick's doing all the calculations in the background to determine what the probability of that fault is. And you can see here we have multiple faults that can pop up and come and go. There's two symptoms of a dirty condenser. There's two symptoms of a, a refrigerant overcharge. And there's six, six symptoms of high airflow in this case right now. So this is all dynamic. As this thing's going through and troubleshooting, uh, what's happening is it's, it's it's continually updating the, what the problems could be, and as you clear those problems out or you check those things, they'll go away. So MeasureQuick will always require a technician to do some of the diagnostics because you have to go through, is there duct leakage, yes or no? I can tell you we, we suspect it, but I can't tell you definitively that there is duct leakage. And that's a little bit how you use these types of uh, tools in MeasureQuick to make your job faster and easier and make, really give you a more accurate diagnostics. You're taking that 30 years of experience that I have and putting it in the palm of your hand. So it's a, it's a great tool if you learn how to use it. Uh, one of the most important things to remember here is that there is, in the information section here, a, a, a system information, and we have to make sure that we're putting in the correct cooling profile in here. It's garbage in, garbage out. If you don't tell me 
what type of a system you have, whether it's got a, uh, you know, what the superheat targets are, what the sear rating is, if it's got a high efficiency evaporator, in this case, this is a ton and a half condenser with a two ton, um, with a two ton evaporator coil. If you're not telling me those things, well, then I, I really can't help you with a diagnostic. Just like going out and saying, you know, what is this unit? What's the problem with the unit without having any, any information on it? It just doesn't work. Now I want to show you how we do testing because everything we do here, we do some real testing on here. In this case here, we did say we had return air duct leakage on this. I cleared it out, uh, but uh, I want to go back over and show you what we're doing. So when you have return air leakage, what happens is you're going to get, it's, you know, typically we're going to be making the measurement here at the filter grill, right? And in this case here, this will be the filter grill in the, in the house or, you know, up near the ceiling. And if you look inside here, what I've got is a little electric heater in here that's just dumping uh, heat into the evaporator coil. And it's what it's simulating is hot air from an attic leaking into that return air chase and causing a problem with the unit. So that's gonna drive up the head pressure. It could drive up the suction pressure. It's gonna drive up the, uh, it's gonna drive up the, um, uh, the, the, or drive down the temperature split and a lot of different things in there. So what do you think Waffles, is that the problem? That the heater's in there? Yeah, all right. We'll unplug the heater. We'll see if the problem goes away here. So we'll go ahead and unplug this here and we'll just watch this for just a minute here. And you can see that these faults will start clearing out and um, I'll just reset the faults that we cleared out earlier. And what you'll see is, is uh, in a few seconds here as this, as this coil cools down, it'll go right back to no system problems detected. So really, really fast, really easy. And now it just went to instable because of the temperature splits dropping back down again, but you get an idea how that works. So anyway, if you got any questions or comments, please leave them in the video. If you would, please like the video and uh, take a minute just to like our Facebook page. I really appreciate it. This is Jim Bergman with Measure Quick. Thanks a lot for watching.